then my mom, one day, she just kind of pops this thing on me and my sister uh, that she was going to marry this guy who was a, sin a missionary around the country. Around we got the married country. within like the month that he arrived, and all of a sudden we were in Lithuania. Tiny little town, out in the middle of nowhere, there's no police. We stayed there for like six months, lived in this little in a hall of an apartment building. He's really abusive. He became really abusive while we were there. Just like, he wouldn't let my mom or I talk to each other. I had been raped there in that city just by uh, soldiers. There was a lot of chaos. It was really hard and finally like he got a, he sent a letter to my uncle who lives in America, in Minnesota. I told him what was going on, they are like, we need help, we need to get away from this place. So he promised to send us airplane tickets to get away. And we snuck away one night. We had someone, I don't know who they were, they had a car. And they came and picked us up in the middle of the night. And we went to Poland. And we flew back to America. So I started going to Maple Grove Junior High as a little kid. And I, I remember the first year, I had no friends, like, I had, I think there was five friends that I could count in my head that I could, that I could say hi to. Like, I, I had nobody, and it was, it was just like, I really understood what loneliness was, and so I decided I was gonna be popular and have all these friends and have a place where I fit in. High school ended, go out to the club. I started doing a lot of coke, sniffing a lot of, like, Pills and I, I'd come out of the closet. I decided I was gay. Well, like two days after I was done with high school, graduated from high school. I would, I worked two jobs. I would, like woke up at six in the morning, went to work, got done with my second job by like eleven o'clock at night. Got dressed up, went out to the clubs. Was out till like four in the morning. I'd sleep for two hours and do it again. I was just like on coke and I would come into work and if I wasn't hungover I would have booze with me and I'd be drinking at work and I got into a lot of debt and my I dropped out of, like out of college because I can there was no time to do any of that if I had had any morals before I just kind of I by this time I just kind of let it all fall away I started getting like diseases and viruses and getting really sick so I started I would go down to there's a free clinic downtown and I'd go in there about every week to get new pills or to get vaccines to get rid of all the views I was getting. And I was in the middle of like writing an album about how homosexuality was okay and how it was good to just live off your feelings and that if you felt what you felt it was real. That's not true. <laughs> Just for the record, <laughs> feelings aren't truth. <laughs> I know that now. I started thinking about what I was actually doing with my life. Like, I imagined what my friends from high school were doing. You know, they're in college and they had like a dream to go and do this or be that. And like, here I am. I'm not going anywhere. Um, my body, I'm sick. I'm constantly sick. I have all these diseases. Um, I'm getting deeper and deeper into debt like not talking to my family anymore i really i realized like all the friends i had they weren't really real friends i had come to a point where i noticed i i don't know i felt like i was i felt like i was really nothing and i was like okay if this was the dream that i had had to be like a long time ago when i was a little kid like this isn't what it was supposed to you know this isn't what i wanted to do with my life after that, I started taking I started taking guys out of the club. After like, I'd, get, I'd bring them into my car and we'd sit there and I'd have like a bottle of booze and I'd just like get them really drunk and then I'd be like, hey, tell me what exactly like, what exactly are you feeling about being gay? Like, do you really want this? And it was amazing. I'd do this probably with like 10 to 15 different guys and they all like would break down crying and they they'd say that if they had had a choice, they would never have wanted this to happen to them. And they don't know why it's like this, and they don't know how it happened, but here they are. They always had a story about how their dads were never there, their dads never talked to them. Their dad was a mean jerk, beat him up, you know, like cut him down. 
So I started searching like for answers. I wanted to know like if it was okay to be straight or not. And I told all my friends <laughs> ever since the first day I came out that it was you were not born gay, it was a choice. I knew that. Like I just knew that inside. <laughs> there was no questions, I knew that. I was like, I chose to be gay. <laughs> it was just amazing that they all had the exact same story, you know? And I was just like, that's really what got me just thinking. One of my friends called me from high school, and it was this girl uh, that I'd only known for like a month. And I thought, I thought the world of her. I thought she was so cool. And she said she was a Christian, and that always startled me. Like we'd be talking in school, and we'd be having a blast. And then I would look at her, and while she'd be like saying something to me, I'd be like, she said she was a Christian. But she lived by principles. And it astounded me because she had freedom in them, and I'd never seen that before. She calls me and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm having this graduation party, and I'm going to be going off to college, and I'd like it if you came over. And she knew that I'd been a drag because she'd, she'd seen me like a year before, and she was into all the stuff I was doing. And um, I don't know, she hadn't even finished inviting me to her party, and I was just like, can I go to church with you? You know, and I go into the service, and the first person that comes up to me is this tall black lady. She's like, I used to be a lesbian for 14 years. She knew what I knew. Like, she knew what I felt. And she had come through it, and she was standing on the other side. And it was just crazy. All of a sudden, like, within, you know, 10 or 15 minutes talking to her, I was like... Like something just sparked inside of me and I was like <laughs> I sat up in the front row because that's where KK wanted to sit and I sat there and just the worship, the worship went on forever that night. I went into the back, I went up and sat by myself in these bleachers and I just sat there and I just bawled and something happened to me and that's all I knew. So I started going to church. So worship was the most intense thing I've ever experienced in my life. You know, she kind of told me one day, she was like, you can't live two lives. You have to pick one or the other. Go out to the gay bars anymore. I wouldn't talk to the, my friends anymore. They'd call me all the time, be like, where are you? Where are you? You know, that's all they wanted was a party. And I just tell them, like, I'm not into that anymore. I don't want that. I started going to church. <laughs> and they would be like, okay, Christian, I'll see you in a week. <laughs> but... I never came back. And he was like, oh, so how is it with the drugs? How are you doing? And all of a sudden I was like, whoa, I hadn't even thought about them for like four weeks. They were just like totally, I hadn't even thought about doing any drugs. Like, I was just like, no way. I was like, I have this huge bag of coke and I have like totally just blanked it. Well, I was like, no way, can that really happen? It just did. <laughs> I started opening up with my mom. Like, we, we started just like enjoying each other you know like we'd gone through so much and we were so close but we there was walls in the way and me and my sister we started talking again after after i'd you know really had those encounters with god i started telling her about it and man she'd be so excited <laughs> She's just like, she's like, I can't, I can't believe it. It's so great. It's like, this is such an answer to my prayer. Now it's just so nice. I can relax. And my brothers, we get along really well now. Before, they had nothing to look up to. And now I'm there. I started getting a, a different picture of myself in my head that I'm, you know, a solid, I'm a solid person. I have, I have good intentions. And, um, uh, I really want to make a difference in the world and I really care for other people.